but in London and the South East tonight, we start with the problems of a family firm without an heir to the throne. On Monday, an exhibition opens at the Science Museum, celebrating not the latest development in space exploration or underwater technology, but the Gandolfi brothers. And they've been in business exactly 100 years. And their magnificent wooden cameras are highly prized by professional photographers. But, as John Hitchens found out, it now looks as if the firm could be going out of business. Here's his report. These days, absolutely anybody can take good photographs without even thinking about it. Just press the button and the Instamatic does the rest. And what's more important, when you look through the camera, the image you see isn't upside down. So spare a thought for our grandfathers, for when they took photographs with machines like this, things were just a bit more hit and miss. It's easy to dismiss cameras like these as museum pieces. And since they're having their very own exhibition at the Science Museum, that's what they will be for the next three months. But although they're bulky, they're precision instruments, still widely used in advertising and architectural photography, where large size negatives, up to 10 inches by eight, are still needed. And the Gandolfi is the Rolls-Royce of cameras made by hand even today, and the one the professionals use. Louis Gandolfi, a cabinet maker and son of an Italian immigrant, founded the business, which has lasted a hundred years. The headquarters of the Gandolfi Empire is in Peckham. It used to be a hairpin factory, until short hair became the fashion in the 20s. The Gandolfi's business has had similar ups and downs. At one stage, they had a huge output for them, 300 cameras a year, and a huge staff, six. Now there's just Louis's two sons, Frederick, age 76, and Arthur, age 74, and their nephew, young Thomas, 63. They make two cameras a month, usually of mahogany, the wood lovingly shaped and French polished by Arthur. There's no such thing as an off-the-peg Gandolfi camera. Each one is made to a customer's individual requirements. The largest of them will cost five or six hundred pounds. Then you have your swing in front here, the baseboard, the extension frame, then your body, sets in that action roughly, and the back of the camera. Eventually it will all be polished and all your metalwork to allow movement will be attached. Each camera has about 130 brass fittings, handmade and lacquered. There's a waiting list of three years for a Gandolfi camera, but the sad news for a lot of photographers on that waiting list is that this centenary year may see the end of the family business, just as their cameras are in greater demand than ever before. Fred and Arthur think it's time for a rest, and they've been approached by several big firms who'd like to take them over. The trouble is they're the only ones who know how to make the Gandolfi. If you were selling a grocer's shop, you can sell it because it goes by the price of the stock and all that happens is you make a bargain, in you call another manager. But if I try to sell this business, they want my body. Do they See? want to keep you at it? <laughs> of course, and that's the thing I want to get out of. Fred's cameras have ended up in some unlikely places. This one took mug shots of prisoners in British jails. The quarter plate size is ideal for police records, even though the prisoner himself may sometimes be reluctant to pose for the camera. 
That was certainly true in the 1920s, when the British tried to photograph IRA prisoners with a Gandolfi camera. And they had to have a silent shutter because uh, if they were taking them out in the prison yard, you couldn't ask a, a prisoner to come in and take his photograph, you know, and go like that. <laughs> so what happened was that um, they quite often had a hole in the wall, a tin shed. And then when uh, anyone's passing by, you see, take a shot of him. So you got them secretly, this was the idea. <laughs> That's it. And this is supposed to be a Thornton Pickett silent shutter. It still went click in any case. The basic principles of photography haven't changed since the daguerreotype was invented 140 years ago. What has changed is the size of the machinery. Nowadays, you can get a long distance photograph on a 35 millimeter camera with a lens like this, a telephoto. To get the same shot on one of Mr. Gandolfi's half plate cameras, you need all this. And to expose the photograph, you have to have the shutter right at the front of the camera. And it's all set off by our old friend, the Squeezy. The Gandolfi brothers' hundred-year-old business will close down, if it does, because the youngest, not the oldest member of the team, has decided he's finally had enough. <laughs> Thomas has only been working with his uncles for four years, but he wanted to retire a long time ago, and the business can't manage without him. I didn't, I mean, I, mean, I came in at the time when they were thinking of retiring, and uh, I've carried on so far to this centenary year, what was the main object. Now you're entitled to a rest. Well, somebody's got to say nothing. <laughs> yes, I think so. A report from John Hitchens. A confidential document released by Labour